we got a chance to speak to some of the minds behind the John Wick spinoff, The Continental. Here now is our conversation with director Charlotte Brandstrom. They're calling this thing a limited series, but you have essentially made, or the both of you have essentially made a trilogy of films over a very short period of time. And I was curious as to whether or not there was a different approach to this or did you just see it as a 70 and 90 minute film i feel is there ever a different approach you never think about the format so much i think you think about the story about the best way to tell the story you want to tell and the story is all about setups and payoffs and it for it to work dramatically for characters to have uh, obstacles, to have conflict, so that you root for them, so you get into them dramatically. It's all about the drama, whether it's action or whether it is character building. I'm a big fan of the John Wick movies in general, so I find them very exciting to watch. And I think that what Chad has done with them, he's created the universe, he's created so much with it. So, But he, in the end of four, what I, we, I saw it again not very long ago, it has such great characters. and. Uh, so this one it had three nights. It was set from the very beginning. It was written that way when I arrived. So I didn't have much to do with the format. I knew that the beginning was the introduction, obviously. And I was really a bridge. But also I was about the char- continuing the character's journey, their emotional journey, and how to set up all the action in night three the best way. Which also we need to keep having some actions. But it's really about following. It's, it's a huge ensemble cast. Um, I mean, the characters were very well written. And uh, I mean, I feel like the two showrunners, Greg Coolidge and Kirk Ward, had done a really good job. So it was me to to write, try to do that as well as I could and, and really directing the actors. If there's something that I love doing is to spend time with the actors to find their world. Because also, as in life, nothing is really black or white. I don't think life is about being black or white. Our life is about all the nuances of grey within the characters. Yeah, well, tell me this, Charlotte. I mean, just going back to what you were saying about Chad's style, I mean, the John Wick movies have a very distinctive style, and I was curious as to whether or not coming into a franchise like this, you're allowed to play a little. Yeah, I think that that was set up a bit by Albert Hughes in the beginning because he had done a style book, and he, he met, obviously, with... I didn't meet with them. He had met the Chad and the producers of John Wick before, so he knew where to go with it. But I feel like uh, the real difference is all the needle drops, all the music he was able yes. to add into it. And I love that. He he sent me actually very early on a playlist that he had prepared of music in the 70s, and then I could come up with other things that I liked. So, so I feel like the, the music played an important part, and the music came in because... What was very important is that we obviously inherited the, from the John Wick franchise, but we we created also a different world, which was New York in the 70s. New York was a very dangerous world in the 70s, but we wanted a lot of flavor of New York. Emotionally, music cre- always gives you an emotional response. So I think that music was really important to it. The production designer also, who uh, was extremely talented but to, to give a style to the world. I'm glad you mentioned the production design because I wanted to talk to you about shooting on what I can imagine were quite magnificent sets because it didn't look very green screen. So I'm assuming a lot of that stuff was built. Yeah, a lot of it was built. And a lot of it was done with light and backgrounds. Uh, There was definitely green screen, but not a huge amount. They were obviously trying to limit as much as they could. So we were looking for sets where we had some interesting backgrounds. They could be New York in the 70s like brick walls and all that kind of stuff. And then they, they, they built a lot of it. And and blue screens or green screens was really for far backgrounds, you know, to give more depth, to feel that there was another world behind it. But all the, right. the screens around us and around the actors, and that was real. Oh, no, it looked absolutely amazing. I'm also glad you mentioned the music because I think what sets the Continental apart from the John Wick movies, is yeah. its very distinct sense of place. And that's something that you guys captured incredibly well, just from the opening credits to the songs to the garbage strikes of 1975, all of that yeah. stuff was there. And I thought 
that's something the movie doesn't feature because it feels like the movies were almost crafted to be timeless in a sense. Yeah, they are definitely. They, they, they. As as Chad said once, it's crafted to be like a modern day Lord of the Rings. So it's like a fantasy world, timeless fantasy world. Well, I feel like the Continental is more grounded. I mean, obviously you take some liberties, but it tried to really feel like New York in the seventies, and that was important that you that it that it was right. So if you choose a set that looked like. Paris in the 80s, that would be right. So New York was really, uh, it, it's a character in itself, I think, the city. It's a really important No, ab- absolutely. Just as the Continental is a character in itself. Yeah. I think I've got like 30 seconds. But uh, before I let you go, the thing I like most about the show is that it feels different in that, yes, it's a prequel, it's a spin-off, but it doesn't feel like how a Star Wars show would feel Star Wars. It feels a little bit standalone. Was that yeah. always the intention? I think so. I think that is actually thanks to Albert Hughes. I think that he was his, he's a very stylish and cinematic director. And I think that that's what he, that was his intention from the very beginning. That was is his strengths. And I think that film is really a collaborative medium. So it really comes from the collaboration of a very talented it was a very talented crew and uh, that was worked together to, to create this. But the decision in the very beginning was to stylize it and to make it unique. And same thing with the cast, with the ensemble cast you want it to be. It. Very cool. Um, Charlotte, I think I'm all out of time, but this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. And congratulations on the show. I had a blast. Good. I'm glad you liked it. I love it. The John Wick spin-off, The Continental, premieres on Prime Video on September 22nd. Check it out. Let us know what you think. Sound off in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.